Welcome back to ISF. You know, it's no secret that the South Florida real estate market is volcanic hot. With prices this high, a lot of homeowners are considering selling their homes. Broker Patty De Silva and realtor Chris Green from Luxury Homes by Patty De Silva at Green Realty Properties, our WSFLT trusted advisors, stopped by in studio with the 411 on the best time to sell. Always glad to have you both in the nice studio. Welcome. It was wonderful being in the studio with you. That's great. You guys know it all. <laughs> so much knowledge, years of experience. There's a reason why people time after time come to you to buy and sell their homes with you guys, right? What are the lessons you've learned, Patty, over the years that have really made buying and selling homes successful? I think when it comes to sellers, the most important thing for the seller to do is to work with a real estate agent then they trust and they have a very good connection with. Uh, a lot of sellers have not sold their homes, have not sold a home 10, 20, 30 years. So uh, they really don't know what's the first thing for them to do, where they need to start. So a, a good listing agent will provide them with a roadmap, a system in preparing the home, getting the right listing price, work through the process, explaining the closing process, and really hold their hand, which is, you know, we work with clients in a very vulnerable position. We're in their homes, you know, it's not, not just a business. Yeah. It's a it's really like a relationship to ease someone from one to another place. It's a unique profession mm -hmm. to have the key to somebody's home. Yeah. Right. It really is. It is right? That's a great way to put yeah. it, Patty. How do you vet a good broker or, yeah. or realtor? Like wh how how do you st what does that yeah. process begin? Yeah. Mm. So you look at your marketplace, who has a market presence, who has uh, referrals work as well, you know, who do you know who uh, has worked with somebody they like, yeah. uh, and then look at their marketing, look at their reviews, see what others are saying. You know, if, if somebody has a lot of good reviews, you're likely to have a good experience. They're really going to have access to a lot of you, of your home, of your family, of your finances. Of it's a it's it's very a, intimate. And it is very intimate. Meet a few yes. before you make your yeah. decision. You date, connect. Date, date a few, right? It's a date. It's <laughs> kind of when you're selling a house, you're dating, you're buying something, you fall in love. The buyer falls in love with the house. Mm -hmm. The seller's leaving something that maybe their heart's breaking a little bit. So you got to make that, you know, you got to make that that transition easy. So meet a few of the agents, feel good with them. You may just hit it off with one that you really feel comfortable with, and that's the one that has the knowledge and you connect with. That's important. Jackpot. And yeah, it's a two-way relationship. Yeah. You know, I've met wonderful sellers that I knew I was not the right agent for them. Right. I just know the better the relationship is between the listing broker and the seller, the better the outcome. Right. After yes. after being involved in two thousand transactions, I can say that with confidence. Hey. If you have a synergy, it right. just works. It's all about synergy. And one of the yeah. things that I tell sellers too, you know, don't fight the process. If you write if you choose the right agent, you should listen to their advice. Right. The sellers who really trust the process and they can ask a lot of questions. That's not what I'm saying, but they follow the good advice. They're going to have the best yeah. outcome. Surrender, right? Stay a little on bit? course. A little bit. Stay to the script yeah. a little, you know, yeah. like because we've been doing this a long time, yeah. and we're we're making that script tighter and tighter. We're making sense of the process, so trust it. Yeah. If you trust the one you're working with. Yeah. Well, Chris, one thing I love about you is that you're all about organization, the details, getting it done. What are the don'ts? <laughs> what are the don'ts of buying? But what should a buyer or seller have in order for? A successful outcome. I think from my experience right now in this time that we're in the pre-approval like really get your finances together before you start shopping because with media out there today you can look through and see gorgeous homes you can see all sorts of things that's in your face every second but what can you afford so get that find the lender that you can trust another thing and really see where you can where you're gonna spend your money yes. and, and have prepared. that passport to travel like to see and you can say look this is what I'm willing to pay and depending on what the interest rate you can lock in at, you know what you're going to be spending monthly, and that's what you do. You go out shopping then, not before, and realize you can't afford the house. It's, it's fifty thousand out of your reach. It makes your heart break. Yes, it does. Because you're then going you to don't fall you, in love, and right. you can't have right. it. Yeah, fall in love yeah. with what you know you can afford.